teachers and parents talking collaboratively about the child's day at school and about the learning goals and strategies needed to accomplish goals builds their working relationship while supporting the child's diverse needs. We played the didgeridoo and everything else. Oh, really? Caleb was really right into it. Was he? Okay, because I was thinking that maybe I noticed um, that the book is available at Greenwoods and maybe we go pick it up and... Mm -hmm. Focusing on strengths and achievement with a curriculum as a base makes clear the next steps for learning. He enjoyed the Harry Potter when you read it to him, the first one, so, um, and he talked about it for days, so I'm sure that if you read this one with him, then we could do some talking at school as well. Oh, and that would be yeah. wonderful. And he'd be talking with the kids to, uh, at school because the kids are all, are all reading, reading it right it, now. So that would be so, a great yeah. idea. I believe this strength-based approach is important because you're identifying and focusing in on the students' uh, gifts, abilities, and needs. You can work with the parents to observe what their child can do, set goals, and then celebrate the progress. Part of our collaboration is really about being able to share in Caleb's learning and his growing and, and, and all of the successes he has had. And, but really, there are successes as a team. Good afternoon, Mr. Hearns. How are you? Good. How are you, Mrs. Drake? Really well. Thank you. Excellent. Hi, Julian. Hi, Dad. How's it going? Good. Did you have a good day today? Yes. Awesome. We'd love to show you something if you have a few extra minutes. Sure. Julian, how about the butterflies? Mama, what? That's yours. That's right here? Right. Is this yours? Yes. Research has shown that the quality of contact with parents may be even more important than the quantity. I think it's really important that parents are kept informed of their, of their children's progress, and it's also really important to find ways to involve parents in the learning that their children are doing. My rule with Julian is, even though he knows it, don't assume he knows it the next day, because right. if the situation or the environment's changed, yeah. He might not remember that yeah, rule or what. Point. Communication with individual parents is best face to face to ensure that nonverbal cues are attended to. We know that 80% of communication is nonverbal and only 20% is based on the words that are spoken. Schools can also communicate with groups of parents through websites, class emails, or using district software. Hello? Hi, Dana, this is Colleen. Colleen, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Just checking to see if you had a chance to get the CD for our book that we're starting on Friday. Yeah, actually, I was able to get it last night. Awesome, so I'm looking forward to getting that going for him. Um, one other thing. I was looking forward to uh, maybe putting Caleb back onto the Read, Write, and Gold program. Remind me what that is again. Uh, that's where he can... Telephone conversations, daily communication, books or planners sent back and forth with the students or individual emails are also useful tools. Oh, that sounds great. Jill said he was quite successful with it once we got it going. So I'd like to maybe get that set up again this year. When it comes to my child, I feel like I'm the expert. And in a sense, I'm almost educating the teachers about the challenging and wonderful aspects about him. And I've really appreciated their willingness to work together to help make school a positive experience for him. For all children, including children with disabilities, parents are an invaluable resource to teachers, providing them with information and insight about the child and what works best for that child in terms of learning and positive behavior support. Also, uh, testing is a very big er challenge area for Scott, and sometimes I recognize that you have to give tests, but even hearing the word test makes Scott anxious, and sometimes having a brief word with him before you hand it out or as soon as it's handed out just to talk to him and make sure he understands what the expectations are might help him feel a little bit better about the entire situation. Why I love being in the class is that it allows me to get new ideas. I'm always picking up new ones from his teachers by watching him and them interact and also I I'm well, right there um, to be able to ask I'm them sure questions about and get any new information and I of course I get to meet all his friends at school. I learned a new cool game from the speech language pathologist last week. Uh, so staying on topic, can I show you it? Sure. That Parents want to help their child learn and develop, but may be uncertain about which learning goals are most important or which strategies to use. And for him to stay on topic, he has to focus on one subject. So okay. his favorite one we all know is Veggie Tales. Sure. So he needs to use, try to use a sentence, and as he says a sentence and it's about Veggie Tales, he can move forward on the road. Fast. You had a crown. I ha I wore Where? a, a crown. crown. Use your fingers. I had a crown and and twist. Parents want their own work with their child to be meaningful and worthwhile. 
Hey, go, <laughs> mommy. <laughs> <laughs> we are just loving this topic track. Teachers can identify the next steps in learning and share with parents information about the teaching and learning strategies that are successful with their child in a school setting. Well, we've definitely noticed an improvement in his speech and sentence structure within the classroom. Oh, great. Awesome. And I appreciate you sharing some new ideas to our original ideas.